Welcome, welcome to a new series I'm going to be doing on this YouTube channel. A really amazing one where we go through how to farm every single item that you will need for the Vaulter in Vault Hunters 118. Ooh, I am just zipping around here. Today is nice and simple. We are going to be going over logs from trees. Um, I'm not going to be going over every single way that you can farm logs in uh, Vault Hunters 118 because, let's be honest, they're so many mods i mean even just these guys right here can farm them in so many different and unique ways well maybe not mechanism but i don't know but uh as you can see we're mostly going to be using create today because create i feel has the it's the simplest method it's very cheap it basically these little farms uh will last you pretty much forever and for what they do they're decently uh, lag free they're not they're not actually horrible i'm gonna be going over how they work how to build them a little bit of theory with them and then i do have another way over here the phytogenic insulator which i'll show you guys how to do as well so to start the simplest i mean they're all really simple it's just a spinning little tree farm uh it places down the oak saplings waits for them to grow and these mechanical saws will break them put them in the chest this portable Inventory will suck them out through a chute and place the items in a chest. Ignore these flex linkage amplifiers. This whole thing is powered by a water wheel, which you can see is ridiculously cheap, especially like a whole tree farm and the base power costs two chromatic steel. It's basically free. And you can see right here, it is about to chop this tree down. So satisfying, so nice. You love to see it. This is basically all you need, not in the material amounts, because this farm can be basically any size you want. Um, so I'm not going to tell you to build it at one size or another, but all you're going to need is some super glue to stick things together, some dirt for the trees to grow on, some chests for the trees to be put into. You need your power source. I'm using water wheel, a portable storage interface for maneuvering your storage and a smart chute for pulling it out of the portable storage. It's all based on a mechanical bearing. Uh, so make sure you have one of those mechanical bearings. They're ridiculous. I mean, this whole farm is ridiculously cheap. Uh, I think that's the only Laramar cost in the entire farm, actually, is the smart shoot. So you don't even have to use a smart shoot. You could use a regular shoot, which doesn't cost Laramar. You'll need linear chassis. They're the guys that you're going to put on top of your mechanical bearing. They automatically stick to each other, so if they're really useful. Uh, a mechanical saw, that's what's actually going to chop the trees and you're going to need deployers, which are going to place your saplings on the dirt. Just a ridiculously cheap farm. It requires the almost no vault uh, ingredients, except for like chromatic iron, but everyone has chromatic iron. You know what? I forgot one thing, a bucket of water. Make sure you have a bucket of water. All right, let's go over how to build it. Nice and easy. I am going to build it with the water wheel very exposed, just so that you guys can see it, but you don't have to, but just make sure you build this nice, three by three box to put your water wheel in note how the teeth are you're going to want your water flowing uh into the teeth right so properly so i'll take our water bucket we want the water here you notice the water is going to flow off in every direction it's moving very slow you just got to block the water flow there and perfect it is now flowing properly with the teeth of your water wheel place your mechanical bearing on top of the water wheel and you're going to build out three from the mechanical bearing in each direction if you want to do the uh, five by five farm I have over there build out two from each of these little uh, spokes and you'll see they're going to connect diagonally and just fill this guy in and you have the base of your farm this is pretty much as big as it needs to be I promise you this is, this is very, very, very simple. Next up, you got to take your linear chassis. Make sure they are facing in this direction so the wood is pointing outwards. Uh, and here you're going to want to note the spin direction of your water wheel, right? So we can see the water wheel is going to be spinning in this way. So this guy is going to be spinning this way. It's important because you want to make sure your saws are on the, so on the side that's facing outward, okay? So glue up your linear chassis with your super glue like that and just place your saws like so. Next, you're going to want to come over here and build up two blocks like that. Whoops. Glue your linear chassis here and place your deployers facing downwards into the block. And then you're going to take whatever sapling you want to farm and place them into the filter slots. I'm going to do 
uh, not spruce. I'm going to do birch just to show that it'll work with oak. It'll work with whatever tree that you want. Next up, you're going to want to put a chest somewhere on this machine. I'll put my chests over here. I'll use a double chest because I feel like that's all it really needs, but you could use whatever chests you want. Then you're going to take your portable storage interface. Make sure to right click it on the machine and then very much make sure to super glue it onto the machine. Uh, when you are gluing something like this onto a linear chassis, make sure you are gluing it to one of these brown sides, because if you try to glue it while facing uh, one of these sides, it's going to think you want to stick glue on it like so, and it won't work. And just set up your portable storage interface like normal. You want to have a block between them with them facing each other. We are going to take our chute. That's not a chute. There we go. We're going to take our chute, smack it onto the bottom, chests onto the ground, and congratulations, this is literally the entire farm completed. All you need to do is open up this chest and feed it some saplings. One is probably not gonna be enough, so I'm gonna grab more. Um, you can feed it a stack of saplings, you can feed it a half a stack of saplings. Um, just make sure actually, oh, that is a good point. Uh, don't place this guy yet, right? You want this to make a full rotation before you put your port before you set your portable storages up so i'm just going to break this so i can update the bearing and immediately our ears are assailed as this thing spins around uh, and now you can place down your portable storage interface and it will connect you're going to see it's going to pull out the excess uh, saplings if you don't want it to pull out any saplings don't worry just make yourself a create filter and drag in the sapling that you want to filter out from JEI and change this to a deny list. There we go. And you can boop, put it in there. And now all the staplings are going to stay in the double chest. Over time, yes, this is going to build up. But to be fair, you could always just turn the machine off and take it out yourself. Or you can keep saplings in there for a little while. And it's up to you. Personally, I don't think it's necessary. So I just leave my filters empty. And if I launch the random tick speed into the stratosphere, you'll see a trees are going to grow. Trees are going to grow and they are going to be chopped down nice and easy. And there is your wood farm. Look at that, like a five minute build, it's insane. Now, if you wanna do the two by two trees, like the spruce or the jungle or the big oak, all you have to do is just make sure that you only have two by two slots available. Uh, here, I'm not filtering out saplings and you can see it can get a little iffy with one of the patches, the patch closest to the uh, exit. So you might wanna filter out saplings here or maybe even just like, I don't know, an extra pair of deployers or not, but uh, you could always place it manually yourself or uh, to be fair, I mean, with the double things, having only three spots, eh, it's gonna make you so much wood. This is a, an alternate setup that I wanted to show off, which uses the gantry carriage. Uh, a gantry carriage is something that moves along this nice little line. If you're more familiar with that, it's perfectly easy. You can get a whole lot more saplings on a gantry carriage. Um, I feel like it's, maybe a little easier to set this thing up uh, for like if you have a, a lot of lengthwise, right? So very easily, I'm not going to do a block by block because it's the same exact principles. Um, you just need to make sure that your linear, uh, your linear chassis have saws on both sides, right? Because the gantry will get stuck on blocks. So you need to make sure that the only blocks you have up here are saws, and that there's saws on both sides. So we can go back and forth, back and forth. Our deployers are actually underground. They can place blocks through the ground. We have our chest here and the gantry carriage here. And the only technical piece uh, that we have to worry about is this redstone link. All that does is it connects with this redstone link at the end and causes this little system to fire. What this does, uh, this is a, uh, what's it called? A gear shift, right? Which as you can see when it's powered, reverses the direction of the gantry carriage. So on this side, when it reaches here, this redstone link touches this redstone link, powers this piston to push the redstone block onto the gear shifts. When it comes over here, nice and simply, we have a redstone link set to a wireless redstone transmitter. I just set it to frequency nothing one, redstone block two. And nothing one, redstone block two is being listened to by this redstone uh, transmitter and pushes the block off of it. So. It just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, I have incorrectly set up this portable storage interface, funny enough. So when I do this, that's why you're seeing items dropping everywhere because I was a little silly with it. Um, but you'll see even when it does 
uh, change directions as it comes here. The portable storage interface is going to connect. It will deposit all of its items before moving. And you can see there's a ton of items in there because I was silly when building this. This, of course, will also work absolute wonders uh, with the 2x2 two two trees. Um, so, yeah, gantry characters are another fun way, uh, just an alternate way. Could some For some people, it's easier in their minds. For other people, they'd rather do the uh, spinny spin. And if you want to farm logs in the teensiest, tiniest of spaces, uh, Phytogenic Insulator. Now, Phytogenic Insulator is pretty expensive. Don't get me wrong, it's a Necopog, Black Hermetic Steel, and you need to have multiple mods unlocked. You not only need to have Thermal Expansion unlocked, which is normally not 16, it's normally 4, but on this save I have unlocked great, so it's normally cheaper. Uh, but you also then need to actually unlock the Phytogenic Insulator, which costs 2, so it's not horrifically expensive, but just be aware that you need multiple mods and you need a Necopog. But it's as easy as taking a sapling, putting it into this slot, giving it water supply, power supply, and a supply of fertilizer. Uh, you should use the Phyto Grow. It's the best fertilizer. I'll go over how to make this. And it's a little slow. You can even see I've got four of the flux linkage amplifiers, the stuff that make it uh, move faster. And it still takes a while. Um, so I'll show you what it looks like when it finishes. Here we go. Bam, we get 18 logs, an apple, and uh, three saplings. All you would have to do then is take the saplings out, could be through hopper or applied energistics or simple storage or refined storage, whatever your storage system is, and put it back in the top, and it's infinite. Getting Fido Grow is a bit of a process, but it's not too bad. The main things you're gonna need is this appetite, niter, and sand, or if you have a bunch of rich slag, that'll work too. You could also use bone meal instead of one of the appetites, but you're always going to need niter. Uh, rich slag is gotten through uh, induction smelting ores. Um, there's only a 20% chance that you can boost by putting like sand and other slag and stuff inside of it. So I find the best way to go about getting it is the appetite recipes. Uh, appetite is easier to get because you can get it by using, I believe it is the pulverizer. Yes, you can get it with a pulverizer on raw tin and stuff for a 25% chance. And since you can fortune tin, uh, it's much, 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 much higher chance of getting it. And niter is super easy because you can infinitely produce it by using a sand farm and packing it into sandstone and crushing it or uh, pulverizing it into niter. If you have a lot of niter ore, you can use the induction smelter to turn it into niter as well as possibly rich slag for the crafting, but I find it's a better chance and a lot easier to just use the pulverizer. And now you know how to farm logs for the Vault Altar. If you want to learn how to farm everything you'll need in Vault Hunters 118, we'll stick around because I'm going to release an episode on every item you'll need for the Vault Altar. Subscribe, like, comment, have fun, yell at me if I did something wrong, compliment me if I did something right, and I'll see you in the next one.